Making news tonight, Governor Thompson's wife recovers following breast cancer surgery. Did prison guards follow the rules in protecting Jeffrey Dahmer? And consumer confidence high as the holiday shopping season is in full swing. News 3 for Tuesday. You are watching WISC TV 3, Madison. This is News 3 at 10. Good evening, everyone. Wisconsin's First Lady is in good condition tonight at the UW Hospital. She is recovering from breast cancer surgery. Sue Ann Thompson had a lumpectomy to remove a small tumor. The cancer was discovered about three weeks ago during a routine mammogram. This is just shortly after she became a state activist for early detection of breast cancer. She went in for herself and, and uh, they found the lump and it was cancerous. And, and now uh, she came out of the operation very successfully and now she's, she's got a new cause. A Thompson spokesman says Sue Ann Thompson's chance of full recovery is excellent. Mrs. Thompson has taken a leave of absence from her teaching position. She'll have six weeks of radiation therapy ahead. Meanwhile, former Vice President Dan Quayle is recovering in an Indianapolis hospital after being admitted for treatment of a blood clot in one lung. Doctors are using blood thinners to dissolve the clot, which was discovered last night. It'll be a week before Quayle can leave the hospital, but he is expected to make a full recovery. Security extra tight today as confessed killer David Spanbauer appeared in court and was ordered to stand trial for killing Trudy Jeske. The safety concerns fueled by Jeffrey Dahmer's murder yesterday. Out of Gamey County, checked everyone going into court. Spanbauer has his own cell tonight and no contact with other inmates. Columbia took great extents to protect Mr. Dahmer to the, the point of uh, what happened yesterday, obviously. But uh, we're, we're going to try and take steps internally uh, in this environment to protect him from other inmates. Prosecutors next week hope to consolidate all three murder cases against Spanbauer. The investigation continues into the murder of uh, serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer and the beating of the other inmate. The prison guards union today defended the guards who were watching Dahmer yesterday, saying they followed the rules in protecting him. Dahmer's attorney says he doesn't expect to file any lawsuits against the Department of Corrections. My, I, can, I see it as being very difficult at this point to show that the prison had knowledge someone was going to try and kill Jeff and that they turned their shoulder. And that's, in essence, what you have to show. Autopsy results show that Dahmer died of multiple skull fractures and brain trauma, and Jesse Anderson remains in very critical condition tonight and is in a coma at UW Hospital. Well, we know a little more tonight, John, about the accused killer. Christopher Scarver was born in Milwaukee. Two years ago, he got a life sentence for an execution-style murder. Court records show he had mental problems. His former attorney says he was a sick man who needed a mental hospital, not a prison. Dahmer leaves behind a last will and testament. It was drafted a year ago when the serial killer found religion. He writes, quote, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for saving me, not according to my works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Dahmer also requests no funeral ceremony and that his body be cremated. But since both Dahmer's parents, who are divorced, want his ashes, his remains may be split between the two. Americans are feeling pretty good about the economy. A new report indicates consumer confidence is at a four-year high. On the Night Beat News 3, Cindy Krause tells us what that means for our financial future. For most of us, it should be a happy holiday season, and 1995 doesn't look half bad either. A recent survey of 500 chief executive officers finds 70% are more optimistic about the nation's business outlook than they were a year ago. 72% plan to have holiday office parties, and 67% will hand out year-end bonuses. Chris Rich is a Madison-based financial planner. What's going on now, I think, is it's more of an emotional emotional thing. You know, you have people, uh, because they feel the outlook for the economy is strong, they're spending more, and then when they get scared and the economy isn't doing as well, uh, they spend less. A new report shows consumers are feeling good because the confidence rate is at a four-year high, and people are proving it at the cash register. Comes to 2431. The day after Thanksgiving, opening day for holiday shoppers, retailers reported big business. The Midwest came in with a 4.7% increase compared to a year ago. Nationwide, shoppers boosted sales by 5.7%. I wouldn't expect the economy to change around if you're out looking. You don't expect your job situation to change and you have adequate uh, savings. Then you can, you can spend. Still Rich reminds everyone all year, never spend what you don't have. On the Night Beat, Cindy Krause, WISC News 3. 
Rich expects the upbeat economy to last through 1995. Your property tax bills arrive next month. The State Revenue Department says the average lottery credit this year will be $112. The credits range from a low of 38 to a maximum of 194. The total payout to taxpayers from the state-backed lottery will be almost $139 million. Heavy ticket sales push the Powerball jackpot near a record. 95 million on the line for tomorrow's drawing, just 16 million short of the record. Statewide, players plunking down 5 or $10 instead of just one or two. And tickets have been selling at 1300 a minute. The Gaming Commission threatening to cancel part of next year's dog racing season if lawmakers don't give the commission more money to regulate tracks. John Tree says more money could come from the tax the state imposes on tracks. And Brent Moss loses out on another postseason game, his third. The East-West All-Star Game has withdrawn Moss's invitation because of his drug conviction earlier this month. The House has approved the World Trade Treaty, sending the issue to the Senate. Approval came easily by a vote of 288 to 146. GATT supporters say the measure would help boost the U.S. standing in the world. Opponents warn the treaty will lead to lower wages. The president wants an international brainstorming session to find a peaceful settlement in Bosnia. The United Nations hasn't been able to agree on action as Serb forces continue to advance on Bihar. Forces are raining shells on the city at a rate of one every 10 seconds. The Supreme Court is considering whether states can impose term limits on Congress. It heard arguments on an Arkansas case today, but it appears justices are split on the issue. The court will hand down a decision in spring. Massachusetts officials say three men may have suffered gender bias while working at Jenny Craig weight loss clinics. The men claim they were denied opportunities at Jenny Craig and suffered sexual harassment. Reducing cost and making state government efficient. Tall order to fill. Reporter Roger Putnam joins us next. He'll tell us if, he, if the state commission will be able to do it. You're watching News 3 at 10 with Beth Zerbakken, John Karcher, meteorologist Janet Pyatt, and Van Stout. Expectations are high, and the report is due in six weeks. The governor-appointed SAVE Commission has spent more than a year looking for waste and ways to make government more efficient. Roger Putnam kicks off his series, Waste Watchers, tonight. And, Roger, how does property tax relief figure in this debate? Okay, it's added an extra layer of pressure. New state laws require the state to pay a far greater share of school costs in 1996. In part one, photographer Jay Olson and I explore the commission's dilemma of reorganizing or cutting government. I don't think much of government efficiency. We definitely need to do something. I think it's time we take a look again as to how we've organized government. We can downsize government by 12%. This is one report that will not gather dust in a warehouse. That's a game. It's a political game. So if you criticize government, you're really criticizing yourself. We'll make an effort, though. We'll make it hard to do. The last time there was a major shakeup of Wisconsin government was 28 years ago. The Kellogg Commission dramatically reduced the size of government and found savings in the tens of millions of dollars. Last year, Governor Thompson appointed a 15-member commission. The Save Commission's goal? Reduce costs and increase efficiency. And if we just double it, we're looking at a $1 to $3 million savings. SAVE is short for the Study of Administrative Value and Efficiency. Its members are a mix of public and private citizens. My job is to make sure that every dollar we spend is well spent. The Commission's recommendations will have the potential to change the way not only government operates, but perhaps change the way people think about their government. But a funny thing happened in July 1993. The legislature decided to take a billion dollars off the shoulders of property taxpayers. The mission of the SAVE Commission began to change. I don't think we uh, start out with the idea that we were pressed into finding uh, cost cuts. The concern is, in its short-term quest for savings, the commission will miss a critical opportunity for broader, long-range change. We have entered uh, a period of real crisis in faith in government um, and enormous urgency to change. Dave Osborne is a nationally renowned expert on reinventing government. Well, reinventing government is not about cutting. Uh, it's about getting more bang for the buck. It's about getting more value from the dollars you're spending. Which ones? Do we want the most? 
Jim Burgess is the chairman of the Pretty State sure Commission and idea. former publisher of the Wisconsin State well, Journal. If we're going to get anything done with what are controversial, tough changes, it's going to be because people uh, demand it. Program cuts, consolidations, and eliminations are all on the board for consideration. The deadline for decision is fast approaching. The name Save Commission may be a little misleading. While lawmakers are anticipating cuts in state government from 50 to $125 million, few on the commission feel that's possible, Katie. But surely there will be cuts, Roger. Do we know where? Well, the truly tough decisions have not been made. In fact, some of the recommendations unveiled so far involve spending increases. We'll talk about that in part two tomorrow night. Should be interesting. Yeah. Look forward to it. Thanks, Roger. You're welcome. Maybe some more sun on tap for tomorrow. Janet's got the forecast next. And Crime Stoppers has helped solve crimes for more than a decade. We'll have that success story later. Tomorrow on Live at Five, we're back from our on-location trip to Chicago. Wednesday's child will join us, and we'll take a look at the new movie, The Page Master. That's tomorrow at Five. Janet Pyatt's weather has the AMS seal of approval. You may have to look real hard, but there are some flakes of snow coming out of the sky there tonight. Just kind of feeling like drizzle as they're hitting your uh, your face if you're walking around, but uh, that'll be gone by morning. Today in Madison, we had a high of 32. This uh, evening's low temperature is 27. That is our current temperature. It's 28 here at Channel 3, and with westerly winds at 9, that puts the wind chill factor at 14. Well, it's a pretty quiet night across uh, most of the nation's midsection, all the weather occurring in the southeast where heavy rains have been uh, in uh, going on this afternoon in Florida, northern Florida, and southern Alabama. And the other storm is the one out toward the west, this one producing high winds. In fact, some gusts up toward 80 miles an hour across portions of Montana and the northern Wyoming mountains. But in the middle of the country, high pressure th keeping things pretty quiet for the most part, but definitely cold. You can see temperatures in the teens across the northern plains. As we head down even into Nebraska, 19 degrees, uh, I believe that is Lincoln. No, that's not Lincoln, but I can't tell you right now. But anyway, we head down toward the south, 34 degrees, even as far south as Midland, Texas. The warmer air is pushed all the way south now into uh, southern Florida, so everybody feeling a little bit of the effects of the cool weather at this point. We will start to see a warming trend, though, in the middle of the country. Temperatures making it back into the 60s, and this will continue, I think, for a couple more days. And, in fact, a new 30-day outlook has just come out, and that actually looks pretty warm for the next 30 days as well. It will not be all that warm tonight. In fact, the clouds are breaking up as we speak, and that will allow temperatures to cool off rather quickly tonight. But this batch of clouds will be rolling in already tomorrow morning, so kind of a variably cloudy day, but definitely starting out cold with temperatures near 20 degrees. Sunshine should help warm things up, but uh, it'll still be on the cool side with highs tomorrow in the upper 30s. Forecast for tonight then looks for uh, partly to mostly cloudy skies, a low temperature at 19. Still may run into a few flurries as the clouds continue to break up. Starting out near 20 at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, westerly winds only at 5 to 10 to start out. The winds will be picking up though during the day again, so uh, dress warm. 37 at lunchtime with partly sunny skies. 32 after a high of 39 will be at 5 o'clock. Windy with winds from the southwest at 12 to 25. And by Thursday, still windy, but uh, I don't think we'll have to worry about any precipitation of any great men. And a great supply at least until about Saturday. All right. Thanks, Janet. Sure. Thank you. Well, despite the rain, wind, and no snow, a very successful season for deer hunters. Preliminary figures uh, just out uh, show more than 295,000 deer were killed during the nine-day season statewide. Hunters in the 14-county southern Wisconsin district were successful, bagging 31% more deer than last year. And looking at the counties, Dane County kill was up 40%, Green 83, Columbia 44, Sauk 38, and Iowa up 12%. A crime-fighting program, the topic of tonight's success story. All right, coming up next, we'll find out how it's helped solve more than 1,000 crimes. Since it began 11 years ago, Crime Stoppers has helped solve 1,500 crimes in Dane County. You've probably seen the TV reenactments, but do you know how the program works? News 3's Mark Kane has a look at Dane County's Crime Stoppers, one of the most successful in the country. This is Madison's Most Wanted. This is the part of the Crime Stoppers program with which you're probably most familiar. If you recognize any of the individuals featured during this program, please contact the Crime Stoppers office. At 
Since 1983, when it was organized in Dane County, the Crime Stoppers Unit has aired TV spots and a cable show highlighting unsolved crimes. The numbers are impressive. 1,540 cases solved, $698,000 in stolen property recovered, over $2 million in narcotics off the street. Of the calls, we were managed to solve four burglaries, a theft, two narcotic cases, um, the two hit and runs, and a criminal damage. So the total cases solved were 14. This is the part of Crime Stoppers you've never seen. Once a month, the board meets. It's made up of 13 volunteers and Madison police officer Mary Pat Kuala, who runs the program. Officer Kuala's salary is the only tax dollars used in Crime Stoppers. The rest of the money, including the rewards paid out, are all raised through fundraising and corporate sponsorship. It's Kuala's job to decide which crimes and criminals are highlighted. Usually I highlight the cases that the detectives come to me. Uh, basically, Crime Stoppers was set up so that uh, we take these unsolved, really tough felony cases and highlight them. But um, even if a detective has a case that was just recent and really needs help, we'll feature, it's usually coming from the detective. We anticipate that our rewards are going to continue to increase uh, due to the, the phone call load that we're getting. The cash rewards are a huge part of Crime Stopper success. Rewards up to $1,000 are paid anonymously to informants when that information leads to an arrest. The board decides on the amount depending on the crime. In 11 years, Crime Stoppers has paid out $61,575, money well spent in the fight against crime. And so often people do have information out there. And for whatever reason, if they don't come forward to the police, Crime Stoppers is an option for them because one thing, their identity is protected. So if they're worried about fear, fear of retaliation, they don't have to give us their name. And the second thing, if people are apathetic, there's that little incentive of cash rewards. Crime Stoppers works two ways. It encourages people who know about a crime to come forward. There's also a message to criminals and would-be criminals. But if you have the media on top of you and always showing your picture, if you've done something, we want them off the street. Crime Stoppers has now begun a new phase based on the successful cable show Madison's Most Wanted. That list of criminals is now printed in the newspaper. The Bucks try to set the sun. And the Badger women make it three straight wins. Van has the highlights next. Welcome to the Wisconsin Lottery Super Cash. Here are tonight's winning numbers. You can win up to $250,000 by matching four, five, or six numbers. Catch the Super Cash winning numbers nightly here on WISC TV3. Now, News 3's Van Stelt with sports. The Jane Albright Needle era has officially tipped off at home tonight as the Badgers hosted Western Illinois. Wisconsin's first-year coach wants to dominate in home, and her team blows it open in the second half. Keisha Anderson hits for two of her game-high 18. Barb Frankie follows up with two of her 17 as she works the board for the Deuce. The Badgers score 20 straight points during the second half and turned a six-point halftime lead into a major blowout. Sharon Johnson chips in with 14. Anderson puts the final touches on a 79-52 victory over Western Illinois. The Badgers are now off to a 3-0 start. I'm very pleased that we were able to win as big as we were able to win and that we were able to in the second half come out and uh, really execute what we wanted to. I think uh, offensively we show we've got a lot of balance. The Badgers travel to Arkansas this weekend for a tournament in Fayetteville. Indiana was on the road at Notre Dame. Bob Knight not happy. His club blew an 11-point lead at the half. Notre Dame's Garrity scores on the layup in the extra session. And Notre Dame wins 80-79 to in overtime. The Hoosiers are now 1-3. In, in other college scores, North Carolina wins by 23 over Pitt. UConn leads Duke in the second half. Florida routes Boston College. The Gophers buried Sac State. Iowa downs Drake. And UW-Platteville wins 77 or 75 to 41. The men are at home tomorrow night against UW Green Bay. While it's an in state game, it's far from being billed as a rivalry. I mean, I think people have respect for our program and theirs, and for whatever reason, it hasn't become Wisconsin Marquette. The Badgers have never been beaten by the Phoenix. The two offer contrasting styles. Wisconsin likes to run whenever possible. UW Green Bay offers a very deliberate style. The bottom line, it's no fun to play them. We don't like to play them. Not because, you know, it, it's not a good team, it's because they are a good team and, and they really contrast our style of, of running and pressing and they slow the ball down. It's like sort of like getting your teeth pulled on Saturday because, you know, it, it's you go in there and you have to play 35 seconds of defense every single possession and they just try and wear you down, wear you down.
The Phoenix are off to an 0-3 start, and this will be their third straight road game. The Bucks had their sights set on breaking a three-game skid, but to do it, they would have to knock off the leaders in the Pacific Division, the Suns. Around nine of rebound, Charles Barkley returns to the lineup. He makes a steal and scores on the bunny. Phoenix by 12 at the half. A.C. Green, who won a couple of championship rings with the L.A. Lakers, now a star with the Suns, a pretty over-the-shoulder move. The Suns score a team record 12 trades, and they beat the Bucks 123-106. Milwaukee's lost four in a row. They host the Cavs on Thursday. Turning now to the boys' prep scoreboard, Milwaukee, Washington, the Eeks by East. Monona Grove wins over Oregon. Sauk Curry beats Fort Atkinson. Pecatonica pounds on Barneville. Monroe stops Stoughton. New Glarus on top of Belleville. Mount Horb rocks Wanakee. Baraboo best.